We covenant to be eager for ministry to go in a new direction, to embody God's unconditional love for all people, to grow spiritually through prayer, Bible study, mutual support and caring, and participation in our church's outreach ministries, to worship God in spirit and in truth, to welcome extravagantly, to ask in faith, believing it will happen, to be on the road to tithing our time, talent, and treasures, to build our temples to God in mind, body, and spirit, to be at peace with one another and speak no ill of anyone, to strive to be in one accord with the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, to think it in our heads, believe it in our hearts, and definitely do it with our hands, to be at the heart of the community with the community at its heart. Let us pray. Loving Creator God, you have blessed us with a world filled with diversity, all different kinds of plants and animals, all adapted to where and how they live. There is an infinite variety of colors and shapes in nature. You made all of it beautiful to inspire imaginations. Even here today, we are surrounded by green plants, all in different shades of color and different textures. When we imagine the care you took to create the different types of grass and trees in this park, we have to smile with wonder. We can hardly comprehend how much you must love and care about us. Like the rest of creation, people come in different colors and shapes, different sizes, each one perfectly designed for a purpose according to your flawless plan. And each of us is beautiful, especially when your light shines forth from us. This is the gathering of the people of God. Each one of us is unique, but we all share a common purpose, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with us this day, O oh God, for there will never be another day just like this one. We know you hear the words we say, but you also know the things we do not say. You know the secret hurts, the anger and resentments we hold inside. You know what hides behind our smiles. Reach inside our souls today, God, and change us from the inside out. Give us rest in the pasture, in the green pastures you have prepared just for us. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn to page 6 in your bulletin for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and resurrection of the body and the everlasting. Amen. The lesson this morning is a very short scripture. It's from the book of Psalms 23, 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters.
Before we begin, let me just uh, pose a couple things to you. Uh, I'm real serious about this one. And I'm not wishing this on anyone. I want you to make sure you're clear on this. I'm not wishing this on anyone. Suppose that this was your last day. Suppose if this was the day that the Lord decided to call you home. Have you forgiven someone that you need to forgive? Have you loved someone you needed to love? Have you taken time out to thank God for life? Life is so precious. You know, this may be the day that you decide that you will change your ways and change bad habits. This may be the day. This may be your last day. And if we had the attitude that each day could be our last day, let's live it to the fullest. Let's enjoy it. Let's find happiness in it. And let's experience love. Let someone experience love because of who you are. This could be your last day. It could be mine. So choose this day to turn your life around if you need to. Choose this day to be able to let someone know that God exists and that love is the strongest force that there is. Choose this day. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, it, it was a blessing to be able to come together as a church family, to be able to experience the joy of knowing how wonderful it is to worship, to worship you outside. It's so easy to see your glory. And we're just so thankful for allowing us to experience the joy of one another. So help us, dear God, to open up our ears and our minds to hear from you. Remove any obstacle that there may be that prevents this. For this day is a sacred day and this is a sacred moment. And let your word be manifest. And this is our prayer. Amen. This scripture was taken from the second most popular scripture in our Bible. It's Psalm 23. The psalmist David was examining his life and he reflected back on his life as a shepherd boy. For you realize that he was in tune with nature. Shepherds are in tune with nature. They have to be. You and I must be able to take a moment out. Think back upon your relationship with God when you were a child. Think back upon those things that God was able to do in your life and you were able to witness firsthand as a child to see that God has been with you your entire life. God has not failed us nor has God forsaken us. Just enjoy the relationship. Think back upon your relationship as a child with God. And so David was sitting down and don't forget that the vast majority of the Psalms were what? Songs. Songs that were sung, joyous songs, sometimes sad songs. It was music. And this was the conveying the message. This was music. And this song had so much power. It just continues to go on and on. And so many people identify with this. So, Lord, help us to understand the importance of seeing ourselves in this song. So from that second verse, it speaks about green pastures. So let's be clear with one another. There are some people who believe that the most important green is money green. That their whole lives evolve around that money. That money is the dominant factor in life. You've got to have money. You've got to do this money, 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 money. And then when it's time to give back to God, we say, oh, no, God, I can't give you any money. I got to keep that money for myself. You know, I want to tell you right now, this is not an a indication to anybody to feel bad about anything. You give what you believe God would have you to give. But I'd hate to be that person that sees God face to face, knowing that you could have given more to God and you didn't. You can't come up with any excuses. God already knows what you give. But you can't come up with any excuses. And you can't ask, Lord, forgive me. I could have, should have. Get right now with God. Get right now with God. Understand it's not about green money. It's about green pastures. It's about all the things that God has provided. God has provided for each and every one of our needs. Turn to your neighbor and say, I thank you that God has provided for my needs. We have to remember that. 
we have to remember that we know that God has supplied all of our needs. I look at this and I'm not trying to say anything negative, but just look at all this green grass. You know, it doesn't, it is not anything happening around. I don't have a sprinkler system. I don't have to put the water out here, but look at this green grass. I sometimes think God laughs at me for putting water out here on the lawn, spending all that time, energy, and effort, fertilizer, doing everything out there, plant, what's that thing, tilling that thing putting holes in it, doing scraping and everything. And this, look how green this grass is. This grass is green in my grass. Sometimes we need to do what? Let go and let God. Get into that relationship. Establish this relationship with God. Understand the importance, not green money, green pastures. And the second point, don't forget this. David's life was so busy. As a child, he was the youngest child. For those of you in large families, you know, the baby is either spoiled or the baby is a gopher. And this time in this situation, the baby was a gopher. The little child back in those biblical times will always be that child that had to go and get stuff and do things. His life was always busy, busy, busy. Then as a young man, do not forget that he was the one that defeated Goliath. And then he became in this, had this relationship with the king, but the king became so jealous of him. He literally tried to kill David over and over again. He was just that jealous, just that afraid. So he was, David was constantly running. David's life was just so filled, just busy, always running from Saul. But then he became the king and oh Lord, Everybody was always pulling on him because he was the king. His life was so busy, yet he reflected back on this psalm. Green pastures and still waters. Does the Lord need to make you lay down? We have got to get away from this busy lifestyle. Always going, going, going. Not enough hours in the day. Sleepless nights. Got to get up. Got to do this. Got to go there. Busy, busy, busy. It's time for us to slow down. Be still. Relax. Find some green pastures. Go for a walk. Find some still water. They laughed at me a few years ago that one day I got into the shower, got out the shower, kept the water running. I just wanted to hear the water run. Be still find time life can get to be so hectic slow down find some time for you relax enjoy life it is so precious so find some still waters and please don't do like i did because it costs money money costs money water costs money you run the thing around it right go get look at this how beautiful you know we've been out here how many years it's the first time i realized there was water over here and water over there wow be still. Find the goodness in life. Slow down. And one of the things we have talked about before, sometimes shut your cell phone off. You don't always have to be on guard 24-7. Slow down. Be still. For the psalmist knew the importance of finding time, of getting away of being able to commune with God and finding themselves that life is not that bad. Whatever you're going through is not that bad. Someone will change places with you right now in an instant. In an instant. So be at peace with yourself. Find that time. Find some green pastures. Or if not, God will make you to lie down. And you know when God makes you to lie down, 90% of the time, it's because of health. Find time to be healthy. Find time for yourself. And the last one. Ah, the grass is greener. Do you know that I, when I looked this up, it was taken from a play that was written by Hugh Williams and Margaret Vineyard. And there was a, some of you may have even seen this movie. It was a 19, wow, the trains are coming right now. Get right with God, your train is coming. Amen. What is that? Is that, a, is that really a train? Oh, okay. It's a pretty close train, too. Amen. 1960s, there was a movie starring Cary Grant and Deborah Kerr and Robert Mitchum, and it was called what? Green Pastures. It was about two people going through financial difficulty, and it was a comedy, but it escalated into a comedy of love and jealousy because it was always looking better on the other side. 
always the grass is greener on the other side. The neighbor's lawn looks better. The neighbor's house looks better. Oh, I wish I had the money that this my neighbor had. Oh, I wish this. I wish that. I wish that. Always thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Lord, I used to think as a child, boy, it sure would be nice. And I'm going to go back to the Cleveland Indians. A half of you wouldn't know this now. I'm going to go back. Boy, I sure wish I was Rocky Colavito. Rock was the man. That man could hit a ball like anybody else. And I was physically heartbroken when they traded him. They traded him for this guy named Harvey somebody, Cunis, I can't remember. He had lost their mind. I was so bad. They took my hero. They snatched him from Cleveland. The grass looked greener because Rock said, hey, no problem. I'll go over there in Detroit and keep hitting home runs. The grass is not always greener. Paul, the apostle Paul, told us, and hear these words. Being content wherever I find myself. For I know what it is to need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation that I'm in. Being content, being grateful for what you have, finding that chance right now to be grateful for what you have. The grass is not greener. You really don't know what's going on with that other person or whatever is happening out here. You've got to find yourself and got to find yourself in a place where there's peace. Find yourself in a place where you have gratitude. Repeat after me. I am thankful for what I have. Dear God, I am grateful for what I have. Be grateful for what you have. Be content with what you have. Find time to find still waters. Find time to find green pastures and always have an attitude of gratitude it could be worse for the grass is not greener next door you've got the greenest grass there is and Dale and I were joking one day the first home we had and I'm very thankful we were joking about this the first home we had it took me 15 minutes to cut the grass and that's because it took me 10 minutes to start the lawnmower but let me tell you what, the grass is always greener. No, it isn't. You've got the greenest grass there is, even if you live in an apartment. Be content with where you find yourself. Be happy. Life is such a blessing. So hear this last word. David thought the grass would be greener. So what happened? He became the king. But then he wasn't content because the grass was greener. He had to find Bathsheba. But he then wasn't content because then that didn't work out. So David wound up having seven wives and 19 children. And he still wasn't happy because he wanted to find green grass. So what did he do? He reverted back to being a child. As a little shepherd boy, he started thanking God for the blessings he has. So this day, take time to thank God for the blessings that you have. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Amen.
Give a little better hand in that. Come on. Amen. Do me a favor now, if you will take time, if you can, just try to hold someone's hand. If it's, if it's easy to do, please hold someone's hand. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to hear the train and to experience the joy of the wonder of your creation. Help us to understand the importance of choosing green pastures over green money. To make sure that we find ourselves content to know that we're grateful for wherever we are in life and whatever we have, for the grass is not greener. And dear God, thank you for allowing us to experience the joy of us deciding to take a walk, to find time, to slow down, to slow down to be still and to know that you are God. So help us, dear God, to find time for one another and for green pastures. And all who agree will say together, amen.